Stan Gibalisco here with another video <clears throat> relating to the book Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics published by McGraw-Hill in October of 2013, the third edition, courtesy of yours truly, along with Traster and Lisk, the people who authored the previous versions. This version has all new art in it and some new text, some new features that reviewers of previous editions had asked for, in particular explanations of how uh, the currents flow through various circuits. The book is 170 pages long. It has a spiral binding. The paper-bound uh, version requires no battery, no boot-up, does not acquire any bugs or viruses, and you can spill your Diet Mountain Dew on it and all it will get is wet. The purpose of this particular tutorial is to explain a phenomenon in schematic diagrams that can be the source of some confusion and consternation if you're not careful, and that is when you have wires that cross over each other. You need to indicate in a schematic diagram that wires cross over each other. For example, let's just suppose that you have a resistor and a capacitor <clears throat> connected together like this and you uh, also have, oh, let's see, let's just uh, create a... Let's suppose, for example, that up here you have a transistor. Let's make it a PNP transistor. There's the base. There's the emitter. It has to cross over this wire like that. Now, is, the, is this wire connected to that one or not? That's the source of some consternation and confusion. If you have something like this and you see two wires that cross over each other like that, they're meant to be connected if and only if you see a dot right there. Otherwise, you should assume that they are not connected to each other and they simply cross over each other like these two writing instruments would. They are not connected if there's no dot. But this can be a little bit confusing because, you see, in a printed diagram, or for that matter, even in a computer rendition, the dots might not be very prominent. These two uh, situations look an awful lot alike, don't they? Well, in the olden days of schematic diagrams, they had a remedy for that, and I wish that they would still use it. Some people still do. If the wires are meant to be connected, there's a dot there. But in case you can't see that dot very well, or it doesn't show up, or it doesn't print right, or something... You can indicate wires that cross but are not connected by making a little jog in one of them like that. So this situation and that situation are equivalent. This situation is different from both of those two. But there's still another way that's even better if you want to indicate when two wires cross and are connected unambiguously and absolutely without any doubt you want people to know that these wires are meant to be connected. The way that you do that is to make two connections, two three-way connections like that. 
Or, of course, you can tilt it on its side, make it like, like that. But when you do that, <clears throat> it makes your diagram just a little bit more cluttered, but it gets rid of any doubt whatsoever as to whether those wires are meant to be connected or not. Then, if you see something like this, using that same format, you don't have to wonder whether the uh, designer of the circuit and the person who drew the schematic meant for a dot to be there or not. Sometimes, you know, in printed material, a little bit of extra ink will get in there. And not so much with computers, but still, nevertheless, it's better to avoid using this notation uh, in any case. You either want to indicate it like that, or if you do see this notation, then in this style you'll know that they're not supposed to be connected, but an even better way, an even more unambiguous way would be if you don't want them to be connected, that you revert to the old style and use that. There's no doubt as to which of these situations is which. So when you have wires that cross and you want to indicate that they connect or not, don't let your readers get any chance of being confused. When they go to build the circuit from the diagram that you've drawn, there's going to be enough opportunity for making mistakes even if your schematic diagram is perfectly unambiguous. If you introduce doubt or ambiguity of your own into it, you're just increasing all of the possible bad things that could happen. So once again, Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics, published by McGraw-Hill, October of 2013. I highly recommend it for reading and for drawing schematics. One of the bonuses of this book, and most of my electronics books, by the way, is a comprehensive table of schematic symbols in the back, an appendix. All the schematic symbols you're ever likely to encounter in your journey through electronics engineering. Visit me on the web, why don't you? My uh, URL, or whatever you want to call it, is sciencewriter.net. Not .com, not .org, not .mil, not .gov, not .us. Sciencewriter.net. Stan Jibalisco from the Black Hills of Dakota Territory, United States of America. Until next time, so long.